This week marks 10 years since a husband was found stabbed to death in his home and his wife Sandra was sent to prison for the murder. When we interviewed Sandra in prison in 2018, she told us it was a home invasion. No, I did not kill my husband. This video contains the interview of a woman whose husband was murdered in the next room and is believed to have staged a break-in to cover up her crime. December 22nd, 2012, Sandy and Jamie Melgar were celebrating 32 years of marriage. The couple was known to be happy and devoted to each other with no outward signs of problems. After dinner at one of their favorite restaurants, they headed home to relax in the jacuzzi. At some point, the dogs began to make a noise. Jamie said he was going to take care of it. Sandy Melgar got out of the tub and decided to dress in her closet. The next thing she knew, she was waking up the next day, tied up and lying on the floor. Jamie had been murdered in the next room. From the start, the police believed that Melgar was guilty. Although there was no motive or physical evidence to show that she had committed the crime, no other suspect was ever found. <coughs> I need to do a statement from you, okay? That's why we're here. And I will record a little statement and get some questions from you. Answer. <coughs> Case number 12176269. It's Sunday, December 23rd, 2012. This is Sean Carriage of Harris County Sheriff's Office Homicide, 60 Henry 42. The current time is 9.42 p.m. Uh, the incident occurred at 9538 uh, Kelsey Meadows Circle. Uh, also with me is Sergeant Ducey. Sergeant Ducey, can you identify yourself? I'm 60 Henry 39. Okay. Ma'am, can you identify yourself for me? This is Sandra Melba. Okay. What is your date of birth? And your home address is where? Uh, nine five three eight Kelsey. Okay. Where were you at? Let's start from the morning when you woke up today. today. Where were you at? Yes. In my closet. This morning. I, yes. Okay, what about yesterday? Let's we'll start yesterday. <coughs> yesterday. <laughs> Which would be Saturday. Uh, we went up to eat. Okay, where jungle we at? Uh, Mexican restaurant. I think it was. Uh, um, Tim Bravos. Tim Bravos were. Melgar and her husband had gone out to celebrate their 32nd anniversary. In what time was that? No, it was not Don Bravos. It was uh, Cucos. Cucos. Uh, I'm going to say about 8. I mean, I'm just guessing. I, I don't know. Okay, okay so approximately 8 o'clock mm -hmm. on Saturday. And then after that, what did you do? Was your husband? Who is your husband? Jim. What is your husband's name? Jamie Melgar. Melgar. Was he with you when y'all went to eat? Okay. Then did y'all come home or go somewhere else? We went home, but we stopped at CVS. Okay, then what? Then we went home. Melgar had texted their daughter that she and Jamie had stopped at CVS to pick up some drink mixes, which they intended to use that evening. And when you got home, what did y'all do? Um, we made some drinks and we got in the jacuzzi. And this is on Saturday, Saturday night. Jacuzzi, you're talking about the bathtub, the, the, in your master bathroom? Right. Jacuzzi? Both y'all got in the jacuzzi? Yes. Okay, then where were you sitting in the jacuzzi? My back towards, um, I was on the left, the left, we were facing it. Facing on the left, so by the mirror and in the sink on that side, the left side, mm -hmm. not the bathroom side. There's a mirror on both sides. 
It's okay. On both sides. But if you're just standing straight at it, you're on the left side. And then what, where was your husband at? On the right side. Okay. And then what? Stayed there for about maybe two hours, talking and drinking. What were you talking about? We were supposed to be celebrating our anniversary. When is your anniversary? Of December? And I'm sorry, what, what time did you get into the jacuzzi? I don't keep track of time. I just, sometime after we finished dinner. Went to dinner at eight? About, no, about eight. Maybe eight. We stayed there for what, a long while. What time did you get home? Probably? Um, probably midnight. Okay. I'm just guessing. I, I don't know. And did, did you immediately get into the jacuzzi at that time when you got home? We made drinks and went straight to the jacuzzi. Where'd you make the drinks? In the, well, we just grabbed the, we went to CVS to get the Coke and the Sprite. And we just grabbed the bottle of vodka and some ice. And went Which straight. CVS did you go to? Right there on the guest room. Guest room. Um, okay. So y'all, you went there on the way home, stopped off at CVS, mm -hmm. and then you went uh, home. Right. So sometime around midnight, you got home, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did y'all go straight to the jacuzzi at that time? Yeah. And <clears throat> which car were y'all traveling in to get home? Mine. In the Infinity. The one that was in the garage? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so y'all pulled in there around midnight. Did you close the garage? I went in first. Mm -hmm. um, he had a couple, a couple of bags, well, our doggy bags and what we got at CVS to get. So I think he made two trips. I don't know who closed. I went, I, go, I grabbed the drinks and went to the tub. And I mean, he'd have to close the door behind the infinity. It was closed tonight, right? It was yeah. still, it was closed. Yeah. So what about the other garage door? We, the only time he opens that one is the working or throwing out trash. So was it closed when you got home last night? But besides, y'all had to open the one to get the car in the garage. Right. The other one was closed? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you didn't know of him opening it back up last night? No. <clears throat> okay. No. So then y'all went straight in and what, what'd y'all do? Go, let's go through the steps. We started running the tub and... Melgar's timeline isn't going to be precise. Not only had she been drinking, but it had been a night meant to celebrate and relax, and she wouldn't have given any thought to check on the time. I recently released another exclusive Patreon video exposing a chilling incident where a man unleashed his rage by committing a shocking act of violence against an innocent 15-year-old. This heart-wrenching video shows interrogation of Cody, the man behind this horrible crime. Watch the full video and more at patreon.com slash plus. You were dressed, right? Yeah. Okay. Go through the steps. Well, I got there first and started mixing the drinks. And then I got undressed and um, lit some candles. I think maybe he lit the candles. I think he lit the candles. Where did you get undressed? What were you wearing? Did y'all dress up? No. I don't remember. Uh, I think I was wearing black, brown slacks, a brown sweater, turtleneck, and brown boots. And he was wearing 
the black sweater over a shirt, I think a burgundy shirt, and some blue pants. So you went on in the bathroom and lit the candles. Mm -hmm. Is that where you got undressed? Is in the mm -hmm. bathroom? Okay. And what about him? Except my boots, I took them off in the bedroom okay. as soon as I walked in. Where did you put those? There, I left them in the bedroom, okay. usually by the TV. Where did he get undressed? I think in the closet, in his closet. Okay. Uh, so you went ahead and got in the, in the jacuzzi first. Mm -hmm. And then he came. Right. And then what? That's at midnight. Just stayed there for a while. Talking? Yeah. What else? Yeah. I mean. How long were y'all sitting there talking? I'd say about two hours. <clears throat> and what were y'all talking about? The years we had. About my daughter, about his job. Um, about he was going to retire next year and he was going to go on a trip. That's it. Just stuff. Nothing in particular. Any disagreement? No. No. Were y'all drinking that whole time that y'all were sitting there? We didn't drink much. I think I had two. I don't even think I finished the second. And he might have had three. Um, and I've been in there, and um, there were strawberries next to the tub mm -hmm. and whipped cream. Did y'all eat any of those? We were going to go to the bed. Okay, so y'all y'all didn't eat any of those. We might have had one or two, and that was it. And then we were gonna just go to bed. Okay. And what happened? He got out. I think the dogs were barking a lot. And where, where were your dogs at? We usually have them in that barricade in the uh, dining area. I mean, the kitchen. How many, how many dogs do you have? I have four. <clears throat> so you keep all puppies. four of them inside that barricade area? Yeah. Okay. That's where they were last night. Because the doggy door's there. Okay. So, so they can go in and out. Right. They can into the backyard. Yeah. So y'all were sitting there talking for a couple hours. Uh, and mm -hmm. what happened? Uh, <clears throat> he got out once to go get ice and then came back. And then said he was going to put the dogs, move the dogs, because they were barking too much. <coughs> what was he wearing? The towel. Okay. That was it. So he went and got ice, and you said he moved the dogs. I think he took my my fuzzy shoes, I'm not sure. Okay. And how long was that during the time you were there? Y'all sat there for a good solid two hours talking? Yeah. And he didn't move? He went out once to get ice. Where, where to to get ice? In the kitchen? Uh -huh. Then he comes back. Mm -hmm. I got out and went to the bathroom and got back in. There inside that bathroom? Okay. And that was it. Uh, then he got out and said he was moving the dogs to the office. Because when they're too loud, we want the neighbors to complain. So he moves. Melgar had also texted her daughter that the dogs were barking and that Jamie had gone to see what was upsetting them. So that's what he did. And he just, you know, it was taking a while, so I got out and was going to get dressed or change in my closet. And I went in there and I started to change. And that's all I remember until I woke up. And then I remember I woke up and I thought I had had a seizure because my muscles hurt and my head was just hurting real bad. And usually lately I've been having trouble with uh, controlling my seizures. So 
I dozed off again. I just... Melgar had suffered from epileptic seizures for decades, just one of multiple health issues she experienced. Fell asleep again. Until several hours later, I woke up and realized I was tied up. And I tried to flip over because my left side was asleep. I had fallen asleep, so I tried to flip over, and then I kind of got stuck where I was for the rest of the time. That, that's all I remember. That's it. I mean, I would tell you more if I remembered more. I just don't. It's just. Do you have pain? Do I have pain? My. My legs were cramping and my wrists <coughs> hurt from the... Nowhere else? Uh, I have pain in my head. Here. Like what? Like I got hit on the head. I don't know if I fell or was pushed or what, but... I, no. Just like all alongside this side. So, the time when he got out to go check on the dogs, to go move the dogs. What time was that? And I say one or two in the morning. And when he did that, what kind of noises did you hear? Nothing. The jacuzzi was still running. Even when I got out, the jacuzzi was running. Sometimes we have to turn it off in the closet because the button won't work. So the, turn it on. the jacuzzi was making noise. It was pretty loud. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't hear anything over that? I you didn't hear anything. Hear anybody scream? No. Hear the dogs? Well, you could hear the dogs bark. Yeah, because they were right outside our window. <clears throat> so did he have to go outside to get them? I don't think so. Usually he just calls when they come. They come in the doggy door? Yeah. So you don't have to open the door? Sometimes, yeah. Because some of the little ones don't want to come in. They're not... Now, if you opened open the door last night, you would have heard that, right? I don't think so. No. The front? No, you mean the back door? Well, whatever door no. you'd have to do, open again. I would have heard it, no. Okay. Sitting that close to the jacuzzi, Melgar may not have heard the door. It was a background noise that could easily be blocked out, unless she was listening for it specifically. And as far as she knew, her husband was handling whatever was going on with the dogs. So when you're in the, in the jacuzzi, what are you wearing when you're in the jacuzzi? Nothing. Nothing at all. And then when the, who found you today? Uh, my sister-in-law, Carmen. The Melgars had planned a family get-together for the following day. Jim Melgar's brother, Herman Melgar, and his family arrived at the house at 4.30 p.m. Herman Melgar said they knocked on the door, but no one answered. He noticed one of the garage doors was open, and they used that to enter the house. They called for Sandy and Jamie, at first received no response. Once they finally heard a weak cry for help, they went to the master bedroom, where they found a chair blocking the bathroom walk-in closet and moved it. Okay. What were you wearing when your sister-in-law found you? This, this Your robe and this nightgown. Did you have any underwear on, Randy's on? Mm -hmm. Did you have any shoes on? No, just these. Booties. Socks? Mm -hmm. And I want you to start where, when they, whoever found you at that point, what happened? Um, I heard, well, when I wake up, I hear the, the, the dogs crying, actually. Um, <clears throat> whining and then 
all of a sudden they started barking. And then that's when I heard their voices. Okay. And where are you at right this time? In the closet. But I was like up against the bottom of the the door. And so I started yelling. Okay. And then what happened? They they came in and uh I think I don't remember. I think I saw him first, uh, Herman, or, or uh, her husband first. And he tried to untie it, and he couldn't. And untie what? The the ties in my hands and my feet. Okay, and how are you tied? Uh, behind, behind my back. Oh, yep, behind my back and my legs also tied back here but I couldn't straighten them um were your legs tied to your hands no no but I couldn't reach my legs my, I tried to untie my hands and then I tried to also reach my legs and I couldn't um then I just couldn't reach So you're in the closet, and uh, Herman sh shows shows up because he hears you yelling. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what does he do at that point when he finds you? He tries to untie me, and he couldn't. And so he walk, he gets right, walks, sees you in the closet, walks right in. No, the chair was blocking it. There was a chair. I usually keep that chair inside my closet. How was it blocking it? the door? I don't know, but I just saw when he moved it, it, it like blocked the chair and then he, you know, the chair, when he, when he tried to open the door, the chair stopped it and then he moved the chair and then opened the door. And I was on the floor and I told him, to please untie me and then um, and then I heard screaming and Carmen came running in and she couldn't untie me either and I said there's some scissors and you know you keep scissors in one of the drawers uh, and uh, why was the family members over there today my husband had invited him for lunch, for dinner. Your husband did? Mm-hmm. When, tonight morning. or? No. A couple of days ago, I think. And they were going to, they are coming to eat at your house mm -hmm. tonight? And what were y'all cooking? His mom was bringing a turkey. And... Some sides, I The detective lets long moments of silence go by, hoping that Melgar will become uncomfortable and feel the need to talk. So when you're in the jacuzzi, at that point, what do you remember? You are sitting there and you are talking. I want a little more detail. What were y'all talking about when you are in the, in the jacuzzi, you and your husband at that time? We were just talking about what we're going to do in the future when you, you know. Where does he work oh, at? Gosh, 
Where is your husband working? Uh, he works for HISD. And what does he do for HISD? He's an IT guy. And where do you work at? I don't work. Y'all had no disagreements? No. At all? Not along very well. You ever have any fights? Usually they were because of my daughter, but she's been gone for five years now, so no. Not anymore. And what were you all planning for the future? When you're sitting in jacuzzi, what y'all want to do in the future? We're gonna move and uh, travel. Move to where? Outside of Houston. And you're gonna travel? What else? Just, you know, just travel. Just we talked about. Trading my car in for something else, something to travel with. Um, just to talk about <laughs> you always. Know, Melgar is still in shock. In less than 24 hours, she went from celebrating her history with her husband and discussing their future to having no future with him at all. He's a very good He's a good actor. He took very good care of me. So what is your understanding? What what, what has happened? Uh, What's happened? What happened? I'm trying to remember if I think when we left CVS, there was a, a car following us because when we came in our neighborhood, it was still behind us, and he was really close. And my husband, I'd get upset with him because he he would drive slower to when someone was tailgating him, and I'd tell him, don't do that. Cause Although Melgar is just trying to tell them everything she knows, she has set off a red flag. Mysterious cars and strangers are often elements introduced into a story to distract the police from the actual perpetrator, even if there was such a car. It can often feel as if one is following, even when it is just a coincidence. You know dangerous and so um but the guy turned left and we turned right and so we thought it was just a coincidence and I keep remember, trying to remember what time that was but 
He turned right. He turned left. What kind of car? I don't know. We just saw headlights <clears throat> right behind us from the time we left. See these? We couldn't see a car. <clears throat> I don't think he would open the door to some stranger. I don't know if they took anything. I'm sorry. He had a gun. And I think maybe he was trying to go for the gun. Where does he keep the gun? In the closet. What kind of gun? It's just a red. A pistol? Do you know where he keeps it in that closet? No. I wanted him to keep it in the safe, but. But he's too stubborn. The police found a loaded gun hidden from view in the bedroom closet where Jim Melgar was found, as well as a locked safe. Do you know the combination of that safe? I have it written on it. So the bread does not stay in the safe, but it stays in that closet. It you don't know where he would hide it in there? keep it in the safe. Only with my daughter's home. She has a severe depression. So she's suicidal at times, so hide medicine and everything. The gun. So you think that the gun is locked in the safe now? I don't know. I don't think so. I haven't been in the safe in a long time. I don't know. So what makes you think he would go in the closet for the gun? Well, if someone was in the house to protect himself. I mean, is that where the gun's kept? Mm -hmm. In the closet? But yeah. not in the safe? No, he doesn't keep it. Do you know where in that closet they're going with that? No. Sandra, when y'all came in last night, where, what door did y'all come in at? The garage door. And was the front door locked? Yeah, it's always locked. We hardly ever use it. Okay, was the back door locked? Did y'all lock it? Did you lock it or did he lock it last night? He was working outside yesterday. In the back room or Before front he room? left, so I, I'm assuming he locked it. I didn't go out at all yesterday. You set the alarm? No. Never you have an alarm in the house? It's not monitored, so I never set it. Sometimes we'll set it when we go out, but not when we're home. Um, why we do that? Sandra, 
part of our job is what we do is we gather witness statements okay we also search for video cameras mm -hmm. okay and a couple of your neighbors had video cameras mm -hmm. and wanted to get your house pretty well mm -hmm. okay your front door was locked your back door was locked nobody came in okay. through the garage mm -hmm. okay so we work hundreds and hundreds of murders mm -hmm. okay and sometimes we we work cold-blooded killers mm -hmm. that just on the street that would just kill somebody for nothing okay and then sometimes we work murders that they're in an argument and something happens mm -hmm. okay there's two different types of people you understand because if you argue with somebody and you lose it no. Your temper and an argument That's happened. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. And I think I'm going to stop talking now because... The police do not have to be truthful with Melgar about what information they have. By telling her that there is no way anyone could have entered, they are hoping to force her into a confession. I think I'm going to be a lawyer because I know how this works. I was the only one in the house, so of course... Melgar senses that she is the prime suspect and indicates that she wants a lawyer. Who else would be in the house? No one would, would. That I know of, no one. No one would have been in there. But we wouldn't have left the garage door open either. You would have closed the garage door. I never use that side. Right. Well, what we're trying to do is get as much information we possibly can, you understand that? So we can narrow down times and, and all that stuff. Okay, so that's what we're working on here. And if somebody did come into your house and hurt your husband, we have to figure that out. I want you to figure that out. Okay, and so that's why we're, I'm trying to get more specific details from you. you understand? Yes. And so that's part of our job here if there's a if there's camera in the front of the house there's the back of the house too so we're trying to figure out what's going on mm -hmm. you understand and you're in the house and your husband's in the house and your husband's dead mm -hmm. okay I know, I know that i know that. so i know how it looks but i was also tied up and there's i couldn't that's just When you when you got out of the jacuzzi, when you got out of the jacuzzi to, to put clothes on, you said you had no clothes on in the jacuzzi. So when you got out, do you remember what clothes you put on? Yes, I have a robe I used for the bath. Is that the robe? No. Okay. No, different robe. So you put a robe on. Right. And you put underwear on. No, I put I. I don't remember. I took a shower. No, I didn't take a shower. I took a robe. I, I dried myself off. I put the robe on, and then I dried myself off, and then I went and changed, and I put this robe on. And you changed inside the closet. Yes. And when you changed, what what did you you said you put that robe on? Did you put any underclothes on? Yes. Do you remember what, what you put on? Yeah, a pair of underwear. What color? I don't remember. Lavender, maybe. Okay. What about a bra? No. Any any kind of undershirt or anything like that? Just this uh, this thing here. That's it. Okay. The, the black? This is a kind of a bra thing. Okay. Um, and... You said you're still wondering where he's at at that time, right? You haven't heard from him. How long has it been? No. 
how long had it been from the time he got out to go check the dogs to the time you got out and went and got dressed? About 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And he was supposed to just go move them and come back, right? Right. They ask Melgar about small details, things that she does not think could incriminate her. In truth, they are looking for any inconsistencies to show that it is at least possible she is lying. So what noises were you hearing when you got out? Nothing, the jacuzzi was still going. So you said you hadn't had much to drink. You're coherent, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what, what are you hearing before you said that you blacked out? Nothing. Nobody running? Nobody saying anything? Shouting? No. Nothing. You understand where I'm going with those questions? I understand, but I didn't hear anything. What all did what all did y'all have with in, with you inside the jacuzzi? What? What all did you have inside the jacuzzi when y'all were inside there? What did we have? Mm -hmm. To drink? No. What 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 all items were in the jacuzzi with y'all? Nothing. I mean, I've I've been in there since, and I've, I see what's there. There's nothing in there. Just bubble bath. That's it. Did you have a float thing that was no. in there, like a little, it was like a shell? Oh, a pillow. Yes. Okay. Any anything else? Nothing I can think of. Did you leave any clothing in there? No. Didn't have a washcloth or anything like that in there with you? Uh, yeah, we had a... We have a no, we didn't have a washcloth. We had a lupa thing. Okay. But you didn't hear any noises? It's just real important that you try to recall. I mean, like like my partner said, you know, we're not uh, we're not sitting there trying to talk bad about you. It's just that you're the only thing, you're the only one we had to talk to that was there when whatever happened happened. Okay, and that's why it's so important, you know, for you to try to recall. I wish I could recall. I... My memory is. So bad. I'm just. And you know, I know um, you, you met with EMS. EMS yeah. checked you at the scene, right? Okay. And only you can tell us if you're hurting somewhere. It's like I ask you, you know, where you have pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when they checked you, did, did they ask you if, uh, I mean, if, if, if a suspect unknown, if somebody that, you know, a stranger somehow came in your house and made you go unconscious, did anybody violate you in any way? No. I told them I had, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I was hit on the head. Okay. But not sexually assaulted or anything no. like that. Okay. It's just important that we have to ask. I think I would know. Okay. So you heard no shouting, nobody saying anything, no running? No. All I heard after that when when I woke up was the dogs crying or whining, that was it. Okay. Do you know how long? You had been out at that point? 
Yeah. Is there anything that you looked at in there? Was there a clock or anything inside yeah. your closet? Were the lights on in your closet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you woke up, were you tied up then? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And I was tied up the first time I woke up because. And what did you do when you woke up the first time? I couldn't move because I had, had a seizure. And, and so I usually can't move anyway. I hurt all over and my head hurts. How often do you have seizures like that? I've been getting them more lately. I'm not able to drive anymore. How frequent? Um, at least once a month, maybe. The auras, I get them all the time. Do you take medication mm -hmm. for that? Okay. Seizures do not always occur with regular frequency. It is clear that the detective believes that it has been used as a convenient excuse, even though Melgar has a long medical history. It is also possible that even if no one struck her at the time, she could have hit her head on something during a seizure. Still, not being able to answer many of the questions or having anyone else to point at as a suspect leaves Melgar in a precarious position. And when was the last time that you had one of those before today? Uh, about a month ago at home. Um, and what happens when you have those seizures? Do you, uh, do, do you, what's the symptoms? How, how do you feel when you have those? Oh, I have aura uh, signs that tell me that I'm going to have one. And it's like very forgetful, more than usual. Did you have one of those today? Yeah, I've been having it all week, actually all month. So have you been forgetting things all month? Mm -hmm. And do you ever recall what you've forgotten later on? Some things. Some things I don't. Um, when I, when I'm before and right after, I, sometimes I can't even tell you my name. Okay. And let me ask you this, and I asked you before, but you didn't answer my question. Why are we here? Do you know what has happened today? My husband was murdered. How? I don't know. I don't think he was shot. Well, what do you I understand? Heard what, do you, it. what do you understand has happened? You know, who told you that he was murdered? I saw him. You did? Yes, when they untied me, I heard hysterical screaming and I ran over there and I checked his pulse. Okay. To see if there was anything we could do. Yeah, I saw him. Okay, I didn't know that. I saw him. And you touched him? Yes. Touched his wrist? I touched his neck. Okay. It's freezing cold. And I know I shouldn't have touched him and then I covered him. And I know I shouldn't have done that. What'd you cover him with? You know, something that was laying next to him, a jacket. It was a blue jacket. Was it his jacket? Yeah. Let's go back to uh, when you went to CVS. It's like a dream nightmare. You said you mentioned that when y'all were at CVS. Who, who went in at CVS? Did both of you went? No, he did. He did? You waited? And at what point did you think that somebody was following you? Just, we were driving down Gessner because he was just right next, right behind us. There's another lane and he wouldn't go around. Were you behind. looking at him in the rear view mirror or the side mirror? You looking at I the person? I couldn't see him on the side mirror, the car. I couldn't see a person. It was too dark. Could you tell if there was just one person in there? Or? No, I couldn't see anything inside the car. And that car, you're saying car, was it a car? 
Not a truck? I, I don't know what it was. It was it like a big vehicle, a small vehicle? It was vehicle? a big vehicle, yeah. I don't know if it was a truck. It could have been an SUV. I think maybe it was an SUV. Did you tell anything about the color? Pass any lights, any street lights? And... I don't remember if there's any street lights between the two Okay, and you said that when you turned on your street, it went on? No, it, no, it turned into our subdivision. Behind you? Mm-hmm. Okay. But then it took a left and we took a right. And when it took a left, did you uh, look back to see what it looked like? No, no, we just said, oh, it was just a coincidence and just kept going. Melgar's vagueness does not help her case. While it is reasonable that she wouldn't have looked for details at that point, it makes it sound as though as if she is only giving them enough information that cannot be totally disproven. Okay. Do you remember seeing that vehicle when you were parked at CVS? Mm-mm. Where did y'all park? I wasn't park? paying attention. Where did y'all park at CVS? Um, at around away from the door, like the third lane away from the the main lane parked far away. So, if the door is here, you park the third parking space over here. No, to the third row away. Okay. From the not the first row, but like the third row back. Okay. Um. Was it was it busy at CVS? No. Not a lot of cars. Why'd y'all park so far away? Because he doesn't like to get the cars dinged. So there were some cars. Yeah, there were a few. Okay. When was the last time y'all got into an argument? Like I said, when my daughter lived with us. So how long ago was that? It was about five years ago. Where does she live? England. Why England? She got married. She um, supposed to be moving back. Her, her mm-hmm. and her husband? Mm-hmm. To uh, college station. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, my partner explained to you about the front door and everything. Mm-hmm. We, we checked your house over real good. Yeah. And um, what's your feelings on how this happened or what has happened? I, I don't know why the garage door was open. That That doesn't make sense to me. Because we don't use that one. We use the other one for my car. And that was it. We don't open both. So it's rare for that side of the garage to be open? Only when my husband's working. Which she was that day, but in the daytime, not at night. And he didn't leave it open when y'all left? No. To go eat and everything, right? It wasn't open when you came home? No. Was that door open? Was the garage door open? Yes. Both of them do. Both. Can you do it accessing it through the garage? Yes. Okay. And do y'all have uh, the ones in the vehicle both. like an also? Yeah. In both vehicles? Yes. So if that door is closed and you are inside, somebody would have to open it from the inside in order to get that open. Mm-hmm. You can't go on the outside and, and pull it open. No. So I guess last last Saturday night when you went to the jacuzzi, you never left the house after that morning. Mm-hmm. 
No. Melgar has a habit of answering some questions in a soft, hesitant manner, which can be indicative of both confusion and lying. Were y'all cleaning up that day? Um, yeah, because of his family coming today. I mean, I'm always cleaning up after the puppies, so we didn't. Did you have any cleaning stuff out today? Or yesterday? I always keep a mop, mop in the bucket. And where was that at? It's either in the kitchen or or in the dining area. I can't remember where I left it last. Uh, is there any other way besides the front door, the back door? And the kitchen doors, or any other doors that anybody could get access into the house? No. On the, uh, the kitchen door that leads to the garage, do y'all keep that locked? No. No, we keep that locked. I don't even think it locks. I don't know that it locks. Has your house ever been burglarized? Not this one. Y'all lived there how long? Maybe seven years. I don't remember. Never had a burglary. Well, we had some kids take some stuff. Friends of my daughter, drug addicts, took some stuff. How long ago was that? That was. I think that was five years ago, right before she left. Does your husband have any enemy, any enemies? No. Did you have any enemies? No. Melgar claims that neither she nor her husband had any enemies. With a lack of any other serious suspect, she is almost guilty by default. No, we don't. Everybody likes him. He gets along. Either one of y'all use any any drugs? No. Any illegal drugs? Not at all. No. And that's not why we're here, but No, we, we don't. have to ask. No. Just need to come. We have several businesses where he does. He's always into something. So he works where? HISD. Works to HISD? And what else does he do? We have several rental properties. And, uh... How many? Um, three right now, I think. We have five, but I think it's three now. Two. Three. Okay. What else? Yeah. Um, we also manages his mom's rental property, so four, I guess. Uh, we have like a billing service for doctors, but my daughter does most of the work. 
Mm -hmm. Kind of just relegate it. So she does that from England. Okay. What else? Um, that's it right now. Any problem with the people that rent those properties? Do you know all the people that rent those four properties? He manages everything. And does he go and collect the rent in person or does they send it? Sometimes. That in? Uh, one of them deposits it into the bank account and the other two he goes in. The other one he picks up. Um, what part of town? There's one in. Missouri City, one in Ailey. Um, one near where we are. And um, are you able to give me all the names and addresses of those places? I have to look it up in the computer. Okay. We're going to want to do that. Okay. Um, and I need to know the places that he goes and picks them up in person. Names of the people that rent. Okay. And you don't know of any of the business. You don't know of any problems with anybody collecting from or any, are there any people that he's ever talked about were shady or. Well, with his mom's property, he had some trouble, but I don't. I think that's been the fixed the dog or whatever. Um, Trouble with who? With. I can't remember the whole story. Even when Melgar does come up with someone who may have had some sort of issue with her husband, she doesn't have any of the details, and she doesn't sound as if she is trying very hard to remember. This may be due to shock, but it is still enough to influence the detective's opinion. Um, he was going to have to evict them. His mother? Oh, she doesn't live on that property. That's no. just something she owns? Right. Okay, and it's, where's that located at? In Ailey. Okay. I can't right. remember why he was going to <laughs> How long ago was that? Maybe three months ago. Okay. Um, I'm so bad with time, I just, I just... I'm taking guesses here. Um, so he was going to have to evict them. They weren't paying rent. No, it something that they were doing that the homeowners association wanted them out. Okay. I can't remember what it was that they were doing. And what problem was he having with them? He was telling them they needed to. I think they were breeding dogs, pit bulls or something. I don't remember. He told them they couldn't do that. We're just going to have to let them go. And how'd that go? <clears throat> the, the husband got upset and called my husband and told him that, you know, it wasn't fair and all that, that they were doing that. I just don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. Okay, what do you think? I don't think that's it. We're listening. I don't know what it is, but I just... Is there somebody else that you feel like might be responsible? I can't think of anybody. No. Okay, well, let me ask you something. It's all procedure to, to, for us to talk to you, okay? We want to find out the answer to this as bad as you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do. We really do. And we're not trying to cause you trouble or cause you pain. But we have a procedure. Are you familiar with a polygraph exam? Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to take a polygraph exam? Yeah. We uh, have a person that's going to come here. He's probably I here now. I can't do it now. I'm just 
a nervous wreck right now. Okay, well let me I explain. Just can't do let it me now. explain this. <clears throat> and I'd rather get a, talk to a lawyer about it because I already, I already feel like, you know, I know where this is going. Okay, well I want you to understand. When Melgar speaks with her lawyer, she also needs to mention her medical condition. With her various seizure disorders, she's probably not a good candidate for the test, and it might do her case more harm than good. That, you know, our motive is to try to find out what happened to your husband. Mm -hmm. Just like I told you. I know. And our procedure is to do that now. Now, I understand that you're upset, understand that you've been through a lot. This person that does this is a professional and is able to filter for that. They're able to work through that. And I want you to meet with him and talk to him, no matter if you take the exam or not, okay? And that way they can explain that to you because I'm not a polygraph examiner, I'm not a professional at that. But I'm telling you that, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to pin something on you. We're not trying to get you to say that you've done something that you haven't done, okay? We're merely trying to go through the procedure so that later on when we're asked, you know, we can tell you that that's what we've done. We've done our procedure, we've done our job, okay? And I'm asking you to also, you know, try to dig deep. I understand that you said that you were, you were struck and that you went unconscious, I understand that. But I'm asking you to really dig, you know, dig deep because you know you were there. I don't weren't. think I went unconscious. Okay. I mean, I think having a seizure is different from going. I mean, it's okay. the same. I understand. It's the same. You it's said that you, when, you, when you've had those experiences, that you forget things, and we understand that. But you know, and I'm not a doctor, but I'm asking you, you know, of course, for you and for us. For your husband's sake, you know, if you can dig down and try to remember anything that might help us, that's what we want to try to do. Okay, Sandra, that's a, <clears throat> excuse me, that's our that's our sole purpose for why we're here. You know, we don't know you, you don't know us. Didn't know your husband. But that's our job is to try to find out the truth. Okay, and that's what we're gonna to try to do. You know, maybe, maybe talking to a professional like that may help you to remember something too. That has been a case in the past. Sandra? Yes. How you feeling? Freezing. Well, I tried to turn the air down. Uh, this building keeps us constant t temperature, you know. Um, how did the meeting go with Mr. Cavalier? Guess okay. Did you take the polygraph? No. How come? I don't. I needed to wait because I'm just too shaky right now. And uh, they tell you you can filter that. Uh, no, he didn't say that. You understand what our mission is try to get to the truth I want to start I want to start you know from the beginning you uh you and your husband how long have you been married 32 years 32 years and from what I understand you just celebrated a anniversary is that correct how many years 32 when was that the 12th was supposed to be but we didn't celebrate it I don't remember why not what was the reason I don't remember why not I mean, that's a pretty big event, uh, 32 years, and at the 12th, you were supposed to probably plan that, huh? I may mean, not have been feeling well. Okay. I think that's what it was. I wasn't feeling well. How, how old are you right now? 53. And I noticed you walk with a cane. Why, why is that? I've had my hips replaced, and I have a lot of joint pain from it. How long ago did you have the hips replaced? My left one. In addition to her hip replacements, Melgar also suffered from lupus, epilepsy, and hyperthyroidism. At one point, one side of her body was completely paralyzed, and she was confined to a wheelchair. About 10 years ago, 
or 11. Mm-hmm. And then the right one about five years after that. So about five years ago. You've been walking with a cane ever since the no, replacement? It's just when did you start? It's on and off when it's cold. My joints hurt more, but lately it's been more often because mm-hmm. So how long do you think you've been walking with a cane now? Um, a couple of weeks, but some when the days are warmer, I don't really use it. Mm-hmm. Um today because I was you know Something I want you to understand is that what we do when we investigate something like this, Sandra, I want you to understand that we go to all extremes. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't quit. You're going to see a lot of me. You're going to see a lot of my partner. Okay. You are. We're going to find out a thing about you. We're going to find out everything about your husband. We're going to talk to everybody in your neighborhood. We're going to talk to everybody that you're related to. We're going to learn everything. But I hope you're processing else too, because it's it's not me. We're processing this. You're seeing your house too, okay? And a whole lot of stuff goes into these things, okay? It's just so important that you be honest with us. Yeah. It is so important. And, you know, I told you it's protocol that we start close to that victim. That's you. Mm -hmm. That's protocol. Okay? And, you know, we didn't just walk into this ballgame yesterday. And we can tell a whole lot of stuff by the way that when we start with people, the way they react, the way they act. You need to understand that. Mm -hmm. May not always show. May not always let that be, be known. To you, but we're no fools. You need to understand that too. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we've been doing this long enough to where there's things we recognize. You got to understand that too. Okay. No, we talk to this. people all the time. I never said you did. Mm-hmm. The detective's intimidation is working. Melgar feels as if they have already decided that she is guilty and has given in to the subconscious need to explain herself rather than immediately demanding an attorney. I did ask you to take a polygraph test. Yes. I did. And I know and I'm too shaken and I'm freezing. And what's, your, what's your explanation though? What's your excuse for not taking one? It's not holding water, Sandra. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's not. You know, I, I'm not... Uh, I'm just being upfront and honest with you, and that's what I'm. That's my job to do that. I just don't want to take it, and then it's used against me. That's because, not possible. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. So, Those are not even admissible in court. Something you need to understand. I'll take one, but I mean, just not now. I've got a well. That's uh, the detective continues to press Melgar trying to make her feel guilty for not taking a polygraph test. He is correct that it is inadmissible in court, but leaves out that it is due to in part to the inaccurate nature of the test. That's the offer that, that's the offer that we're, uh, we're offering now. Okay. And you know, whether you take one now or not, I'm not going to try to force you to take one. It's not, I'm not going to do it. I think it's awful ironic. I think that someone that's been married 32 years, there's some things I don't understand. And I'll be upfront and honest with you. There's some things that don't add up in your story of what you're telling me. Okay? Maybe you can help me understand it. Um, now, you said you've been married 32 years. And you were supposed to celebrate that on the 12th. Well, what reason was it that you didn't? I wasn't feeling well. Okay. And you and your husband, how would you describe y'all's relationship lately? We have a great relationship, even better lately. No problems? No. No arguments? Has he ever messed around with somebody else? No. He ever accused you of doing that? No. Have any reason to do that? No. No? Jamie Melgar was very concerned with his wife's health and spent much of his time caring for her. No evidence was ever found to suggest 
that the couple had any sort of relationship problem. Okay. Um, and so, when did y'all decide to celebrate yesterday, last night? Uh, yesterday, just because I, I was planning, I was planning I'm going out of town on the 25th or 26th. Christmas? Uh, after Christmas, the 26th. Okay, for what? My To see my aunt and my cousins. Where's that? In San Antonio, Lloyd. Was he going to go with you? No. Why not? Because we have um, dogs at home. He's going to stay home and take care of the dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does he get along with your folks in San Antonio? Yeah, but he doesn't like to go too often. How come? Uh, well, because he misses work and he just, it's not his When's he have to go back to work? No. Oh. I don't know, the beginning of... Well, he works for HISD, is that right? Yeah. So has he been off lately for, for yeah. vacation? And they just have to go back... Week. What, after the first of the year? Mm -hmm. So he'd be off the 26th to be able to go with you, huh? Yeah. He just didn't want to go. He didn't want to go? And was that because he don't get along with them? or? No, he gets along with everybody. You and him maybe we weren't getting along? No, we all get along. Everybody okay. gets along. He just decided to stay with the animals, huh? He just, yeah, sometimes he does that. He just wants to. I mean, you and him have a great relationship. You will probably want to spend as much time together as you can, right? When he has to work and yeah, but when it's you know, it's just not. He's into this health kick, and when we go down there, we eat a lot of meat and you know stuff like that. He doesn't want to be rude and say no. Okay. People in the radio just grill a lot and eat a lot of beef. So, y'all's relationship. You uh, you said y'all have a great relationship. Right? Yes. Y'all love each other. Yes. Care about each other. Of course. We want We've been together for this long, yes. Yeah. And so we're making plans for So y'all decided that making plans for what? For the future. For what was those plans? retirement. What were y'all gonna do? Travel. Where? Well, we were thinking about going to um you know, to see the Northern Lights. We're going to California, mm -hmm. Grand Canyon. So y'all decided to celebrate that yesterday? Yeah. Y'all get in the hot tub often? Yeah. The jacuzzi? So I do that quite often? Yeah. Okay. Um, so y'all went out to dinner. Was that dinner, you, what, what was the name of the restaurant again? I don't remember. Cuckoo's. Cuckoo's? And where's that located at? In 290. 290 and what? Oh, no, 290. Yeah, 290. What's it close to? What Jones, are Jones Road. Jones Road? Okay. So, that was at 8 o'clock that evening. What did y'all do earlier in the day? I mean, y'all had all day, right? I didn't wake up till noon. Okay. And so... He had already been up working in the yard. Working in the yard? And then he went to H-E-B to get stuff to juice, because he, he likes to juice. Oh, he's into the juicing, huh? Juice master type stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what time? You got up at noon. What did you do when you got up at noon? Had breakfast. And he was gone when you got up? No, he was there. He'd already he gotten made coffee. And okay. And uh, what y'all do, y'all? Eat breakfast together? No, he had, he had already had breakfast, but okay. he had made uh, some for me and he left me some coffee. Okay. And so after that, what did you do? Um, I cleaned up a little bit. It is important to establish a timeline, but it can be difficult to recall the events of what was supposed to be an unremarkable day. People rarely take note of the exact time of their movements, especially during a holiday vacation. After the dogs. After the dogs. 
Did y'all go anywhere? Mm-hmm. Did he go anywhere? Um, he went to H-E-B. Okay. About what time was that? And then we went to... To the liquor store to get eggnog for today. Both of y'all? Yeah. Where'd you, which liquor store was that? Down in the west. But he didn't go in. Just there. Okay. Well, what's the name of the liquor store? It's on West Road? Yeah. What's the name of it? Texan. Texan Liquor? Yeah. It's on West Road? You sure it's on West Road? Yeah. Okay. And so, you remember by what time y'all went there? What time did you buy that? Probably had a receipt, huh? Yeah. What'd you buy? Some eggnog with bourbon. Okay. And you went in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, after you left there, where'd you go? Um, When'd you get the strawberries? Yeah, we went to Kroger's. Went to Kroger's. Where's the Kroger's at? Across from the liquor store in West. Okay. And you bought the strawberries. What else did you buy? Cool. Okay. And um, okay. And then after that, where'd y'all go? Um, that's it. You went back to the house. About what time did you get back home? Before. Okay. And um, so when you got back home, what did you do? He also went to cut his hair that day, but I don't remember if it was before or after. Did you take him? Mm-hmm. By himself. So, where does he get his hair cut at? It's a place called Nina's on Jones. Nina's? Mm-hmm. Okay. On Jones? And uh, you can't remember if that's before y'all went to the store or after? I think it was before. Before? Before. So when y'all got home at four from going to the store, I'm sure what did you do with the strawberries and the whipped cream? Put them in the freezer Mm -hmm. or fridge? And then what'd y'all do? Were y'all talking during this time? Interacting? I mean, what were y'all talking about? We, one of the things was, you know, find a better way to keep the dogs in the place where we keep them. Uh, was that a sore spot with y'all? It wasn't that a sore spot. It was just, we can't keep them there. They keep escaping. Who, what kind of dogs are they? Uh, the mama's a Pomeranian and, and the Chihuahua, he's a daddy. So the puppies are probably small, huh? They're very small. Um, yeah. So, I mean, do y'all ever have a dispute about that? No. Whose idea was it to have the puppies? Um, the dogs. I mean, whose idea was it to have the dogs, period, in the house? Well, the Pomeranian is my daughter's. She's taking it back when she comes. And the Chihuahua is mine, and they got together. Okay. Now we have two more. Sure. My daughter is taking one of the puppies. Oh, okay. And I'm keeping just one. And she comes back, huh? Um. It might seem as if the detective is reaching with his questions about the dogs, but it is surprising how often a domestic murder is the result of some seemingly trivial issue. So, y'all talked about that. What else did y'all talk about? Had you decided that you were going to dinner that night? Or when did y'all decide that? Yeah, we had decided already. Okay, what time did y'all leave the house to go to dinner? I think it was eight. You left the house at eight? It's a guess. I don't know. I don't know. Um, 
did you call anybody or anything from the time y'all got home before to the time y'all left? He spoke to his brother, I think. Okay, that was Saturday. And uh, I think he spoke to his mom. Okay. And what time was that, you think? I know you said he got home about four. That was about well, maybe six or seven. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, how did y'all dress when y'all went to go out? I uh, wore brown pants, boots, and a brown sweater. Dress up. Just take a shower or anything before you went? Yeah. What about him? He had taken one after he got his hair cut. Okay, earlier. How did he dress? He wore a black sweater, uh -huh. a burgundy shirt, I think, and some blue slacks. I can't remember. So, burgundy shirt, blue slacks, what color sweater? Black. What kind of shoes? Pink. You know what color? Maybe burgundy. I don't remember. Whose idea was it to go to Kuko? We both like that restaurant. We go there a lot. What'd you order? I ordered fish. Mm -hmm. And he ordered um, beef steak. So, what time do you think you got there? Did y'all have make uh, reservations? No. Just, okay. Was it crowded? Yeah, kind of. Did y'all have to wait? No. Okay, so you said you left the house about eight. You got there pretty quick? Mm -hmm. About 8.30? Only about maybe 15 minutes away. How long did y'all stay there? A couple hours. Did you just stay? Let me, uh, besides your food, y'all drink anything? Yeah, we, uh, we had a, had a pina colada. Just one? Both of y'all? And... The wait staff and any customers that might be able to be found will need to be questioned to see if Melgar and her husband seem to be having any sort of problem or if they gave off the appearance of a happy couple having an evening out. No, he didn't have one. He didn't have one? Just you? Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, he didn't drink anything? He tasted some wine, had a little wine, that was a couple of sips. What time do you think y'all got back to the house? Um, you said it was, you said if you were there 8.15, 8.30 to eat and you stayed a couple hours, what time do you think it was when y'all got home? We stopped by CVS. Okay. And y'all yeah. purchased something there? What was that? Coke and Sprite. Okay. And what time do you think you got home from CVS? Ten thirty or eleven. Ten thirty. Okay. What'd you do when you got home? 
got the drinks and went into the jacuzzi. Okay. And um, he was driving? Did you have a garage door opener? Mm -hmm. Did you open the door of the car to pull the car in the garage? Yeah. You did park in the garage, right? Yeah. Um, and just that door was open and then he closed. Well, I went in. I'm sure he closed it. I went in before he closed it because he went back out to the car to get. Um, we had the stuff from CVS and we had some dinner leftovers. And, but you know that that other side was closed when y'all got home. Yeah, I would have noticed. Okay. And you went inside and what'd you do when you went inside? I put the food in the fridge and grabbed the drinks and the soda and went into the bedroom. Did you grab the strawberries? No, we got that later. Okay, all right. So you went into the bedroom. Tell me what you did. Went to the, started the tub. Started to fill it with water. And lit some candles. And How many candles did you light? Two. Okay. And so that's at 10, that's at 11, whenever you got home. Mm -hmm. So you did that, and then what did you do? Um, I just forgot the question. Okay. You said you grabbed the drinks from the fridge, and you went into the bedroom, right? To the bathroom. Went to the bathroom. You started the water. And then what did you do? I got undressed and got in the tub. Everything? Mm -hmm. You took off everything in the bathroom? No, I took off my boots in the bedroom. Okay. And then... After taking her statement, the police will go back over the scene to see if the placement of the items matches up with her description. I took off my, yeah, I took off my pants in, in, in the bathroom. And what was your husband doing at that time while you were in there getting undressed to get in the tub? Um, he was still in the kitchen. Had y'all discussed, had you talked about, hey, we're going to go get in the jacuzzi now? Yeah. And what did he say? Yeah, that's why we went to get some drinks. Okay, so you're already in there doing that. Mm -hmm. What's he doing? I don't know. I was in the bathroom. Did he tell you I'll be there in a minute? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Did he say that? Yes. When did he say that? He said, "Go ahead and start the tub." Okay. And, yeah. I mean, and it's insinuated that he'd be there. Okay. So how long did it take him from the time he went in there and got in the tub? Um, five or ten minutes. So you're already in the tub. Did he bring the strawberries? stuff? No, I don't think he brought that till till he went to get the ice. Okay. I don't remember that's when he brought it. But you already had what kind of drinks in there? We had what kind were we drinking? Yeah, what did, what did you take in there? Coke. And he was drinking Coke, rum and Coke. Did you take the rum in there? He had a flask. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and I had I can't look straight at me. I had um Sprite with vodka. Okay. And so, how long was it before he came to the bathroom? Five or ten minutes. And was he undressed at that time? I don't remember 
he undressed in the bedroom. I think he did undress him. He usually would undress in his closet. Jamie would later be found dead in his closet, naked and tied with a phone cord. But what did he do that night? I don't know. Did he walk in the bathroom with no clothes? I think so. I think so. Did he get in the tub with you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And what did, what did y'all talk about? We talked about... I mean, no. he gets in the tub with you. Both of y'all have no clothes on. Tell me what the talk was. We talked about work. We talked about what we're going to do when you retire. Uh, about health. Is juicing, you know. Did he ever tell you he loved you? Yeah. Did yeah. you get intimate? Yeah. Yes. I mean, was that the reason why y'all got in the tub yes. together like that? Was that right away? Was that? No. no. He gave me a massage. I gave him a massage. Um, he just hugged and kissed for a while. Was that from the start? When you first got in the tub? No. Maybe half an hour into it. Did you have sex? Mm -hmm. Okay. How far was that into him climbing the tub with you? About an hour. Okay. After that, you said that you said that you're in there for how long? How long were you in the tub? I'm guessing two hours. Okay. So an hour into it, you do that, then. Are you still sitting there drinking and talking? Yeah. We're what are you talking there about? And talk about our years together, about about you didn't believe me. When I told you. Yeah. <laughs> Just. It's not a matter of me believing you. I want to know what was said. He said that he. I was very happy that we were together, but he loved me very much, and I told him the same. Why did you say that I wouldn't believe that? Because you think we got into an argument, and, and everybody keeps insisting we argued, and we didn't argue. Such comments by Melgar only highlight the fact that she is worried about appearing guilty. We didn't argue. We didn't. An argument would be the natural conclusion to make if Melgar was guilty. However, after 32 years of marriage, they would be used to resolving any conflict between them. And there was no history of this being a contentious relationship. For it to have been this drastic, the police should have been able to find a motive. You gotta understand something, Sandra. I know you're doing your job, I know. I'm doing did, my job. did he wear a uh, condom yeah. during intercourse? No. Does see it when y'all have it, of course, does he usually wear a condom? Uh, he used to because I was worried to get pregnant. And now, because I've you know, stopped having a period, he doesn't. So, what else were y'all talking about? You still got an hour of talking to account for. Talked about his new manager or boss, the old one quit. He was worried about what the new one would be like. Talked about um health stuff like uh, GMOs and organic foods and stuff like that. A lot of that carcinogenics about grilling meat and stuff like that. Just we talked a lot about that. So did y'all y'all mm -hmm. both into that? Well, not as much as he is. He he's into it more, but I, I do it because he, you know, he'll juice for me and I'll drink it but I told him I, I can't quit meat, you know. I've cut back a lot, but I won't. I'll still eat it every now and then. 
How did he feel about no, that? No, he said fine. I mean, he had meat that night. Hmm. He's fine with it, too. He agrees with it. He was just telling me a lot about research he's done. He's been doing about uh, health diets and... This research was to find anything that might help to improve Melgar's overall health or relieve some of her symptoms. Verse and Okay. What else? Talked about massages and he wants to go. He told me we were talking about some massage person that used to, uh, a friend of ours. Uh, sent a massage, a masseuse for us for our anniversary one year, and he was telling me how much he enjoyed that massage and wanted to find that guy again. There was a guy? Mm -hmm. That came to your home. And, and he wanted to try some other massage place near the house. I don't remember massage your feet, or I can't remember what he told me to massage. What'd you say to that? Fine. I mean, he wanted me to go, but I told him I'd rather just go have a pedicure instead of that. So, and not just an into massage as this he is. And then what? My daughter talked about her from moving back to Texas. How'd y'all feel about that? We were both happy. We were happy about it. So was she a daddy's girl? She was until she married that loser. And so she married somebody and she's having problems with? Yeah, he was heavy into drugs. And hmm. The one in England? No, this was another one. Oh, okay. And then she had to move to get away from him because he would stalk her. Now, is she still married? She's married to the one in England. Oh, okay, second marriage. Yeah. Um, so how did, how did you and your husband, uh, I mean, that's y'all's child together, right? Did y'all, they were having any disputes over her? Yeah, when she was younger. Why, what kind of disputes? She was a rebellious getting into trouble. And why would y'all have disputes over her? No. Sometimes I felt he was too strict with her. Um, and sometimes I try to get him to have a reason with him. We disagree, we wouldn't have a huge argument, we'd disagree on things. You know? So y'all were talking about her last night. What uh what what was it about her y'all were talking about? Well, she just um recently lost the baby. We were talking about how she took it very well. Better than I did. And uh I was glad that she took it well. Um, we're just talking about her new husband. Stuff like that. How did that go? Great. We both like him very much. And then what? And about the dogs that we're glad she's taking, she's taking two of them, so we're just glad that we get rid of two of them. And then I don't remember. 
Then what happened? Yeah. decided to get out and go, he went to go bring the dogs in because they were being too loud. And I went to go change. That's it. So he was getting out, y'all were getting out of the tub at that point. Did you let the water out? No. Um, so far, Melgar has described a very mundane conversation, one that would be typical for a couple who had been together for so many years. The button was stuck, so we couldn't turn it off from the top. And you said it was making noise. It was still hear, going. But you could hear the dogs. Mm. The dogs were outside. And he got up was going to go get the dogs or what? Yeah. Okay. Lock them in the bedroom. Are you expecting him to come back? He didn't say, but I figured we had been there long enough, so I got out. Um, at what point did he go get the ice? Oh, that was before that, like an hour before. And you said that that's when he brought the strawberries and the whipped cream? Yeah. Pretty sure. But nobody ever ate any. No, we didn't because when he got back in the tub, he had left them on the sink uh, far away, like kind of far away. So we, when, when he did get out, he handed them to me. I ate one and then I thought, well, I'll take them to the bedroom. We had the whipped cream, but not the strawberries. And so he went to go get the dogs. And tell me what you did. I got out. Went to the closet. Right, Which so closet? My closet. Which is where? In the bathroom. Okay. And tell me what you did. I started to get dressed. And then... What were you wearing? You said you weren't wearing anything when you got out of the tub, right? So what? 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 Uh, I was. I put on a my bathrobe and. Where was it at? It was by the tub. So it was not in the closet. No. Okay. And then. What did he wear when he went to go check the dog? He wore a towel. So you didn't put any clothes on? No. Okay. So when you put the bathrobe on, it was hanging right there by the bathtub. And then what did you do? Uh, I went into the uh, closet, my closet. You shut the door? No. Okay. What no, did you, you go in there for? When Melgar was found, the door next to her closet was closed and blocked from the inside. I had some clothes to put on. A nightgown and this robe. And where was that? Where were those, uh, those items at? In my closet. You keep them hanging up? The robe is hanging. Yeah, the robe is hanging. The nightie was in a drawer. Okay. So what, you put that robe on there. What color was the nightie you put on? This one right here. Pink? Okay. Um, and what else did you put on besides that? Some underwear. What color were those? Socks. I think they were lavender. Did you get those out of the same closet? Yeah. And are those the socks you put on? Yeah. And um, so then, how long did it take you to do that? It took me a while because then I started to put lotion on my legs. Where'd you get the lotion from? In the closet. Inside the closet. Mm -hmm. And 
you put it on while you're inside the closet? Yeah. Because I have my chair there. You have I a sit chair? on the chair there. Okay. Um, how long did that take for you to, from the time you, after you put on that robe and you went inside that closet and got dressed and started doing the lotion, how long do you think you stayed in there? You have to ask that question again. I really can't think straight. Okay. I'm thinking of time span, okay? From the time that you got out of that tub. Now, he got up and he went mm -hmm. to go check the dogs. Mm -hmm. Did you get out of the tub right away? When he went to check on the dogs? Maybe about five minutes. Because I would say drinking. I mean, I, I drank a little more and then I got out. And did he tell you he'd be right back? Did he tell you what he, he was going to do? Yeah, he told me what he was going to do. He didn't. And I assumed he was coming back. What did he say to you? What was his words? I'm going to go put the dogs up. Okay. How long does that normally take? And you can, if they're all inside, the little ones are hard to grab. So sometimes it takes, you gotta chase them, especially the smallest. Okay, so from the time, five minutes, and you get out, put your robe on, go in your closet, how long did that take you? Did you put the lotion on yourself? Yeah. Okay. And did you not think it was odd that you haven't heard from him? I didn't think it would been that long. Plus, Still got some fresh strawberries sitting over there with whipped cream. Plus, I didn't know if he was getting dressed or... You still weren't planning on eating the strawberries and yes, whipped cream? Yes, we're taking them into the bedroom. Okay, so you've already went and got dressed and mm -hmm. put the lotion on and you haven't heard from him yet. You didn't think that was odd? It wasn't that long. And then what happened? I was, I just woke up. I remember waking up and I couldn't move and my head hurt. So I just thought, I felt like I had a seizure, so I just dozed off again, which is normal. That's how I have always done it. I just fall asleep. So when you woke up, you said you couldn't move. Did you know where you were at? Did you rub your head? Did you, maybe you said your head hurt. Did you rub your head at that time? No, but it hurt. Why not? Because I couldn't move. Why not? Because my muscles hurt. My muscles and my, my whole body is... Did you look at your hands at that time? No, I couldn't move. Were you still sitting in the chair? No, I was on the floor. I was on the floor. In front of the chair? With lupus, it can be difficult at times for a person to move their limbs, especially lifting their arms up high enough to touch the top of their head. This can vary from person to person and is not always consistent, even for an individual. I don't remember what chair was there. What did you see when you woke up? Just something I just remember realizing I couldn't move and my head hurt. I just thought. Did you call out to anybody? Uh, yeah. Normally. Did you see go him? back to sleep. Yeah. Is your door open? Yeah. Your closet door was open. I don't know because I was facing. I was facing the shoe rack. I remember I was facing the shoe rack. So you didn't look around. I couldn't look around. I couldn't move. Does that happen often? When it happens, that's how it happens, yes. How often does that happen? I hadn't had any for years, and then I started having them again. Have you talked to your doctor about it? 
Uh, talk to the rheumatologist and my. Who's your rheumatologist? <laughs> I don't remember her name. Starts with an M. Something like Melinda. I want. Where's her hospital at? Where's her office at? Um, I think Steeple Chase. I think Steeple Chase. And you don't remember your doctor's name? There's a doctor that I you have go to. Several normally. doctors. Okay, okay, just tell us name. Who's, who's your primary care Lynn, doctor? Dr. Lynn. Dr. Lynn is my primary care doctor. N G U Y N. Mm. First name? Susie. Okay, where is she at? She's on Highway 6. Okay, she's your primary care? Yes. Who else? She's the one that refers you to these people? Yes. Okay, who's the next one? Um, uh, mainly just I've been going to the rheumatologist. And you don't know the rheumatologist's name, but Malini, Susie Wynn will be able to tell us, huh? Yes. Okay. Malini, I think. Malini? Malini. You know how to spell that? It's M A L I N I. Yeah. Now, okay. So you said your head was hurting, yeah. It's still is. Well, where, where, where's the hurting at? It hurts right here, but I feel like I have a fever. Hmm. Does it feel like, like somebody shaking. hit you? Yeah. Your, ar your well, arms are all bruised up. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. But I usually yeah. break bones with, and stuff when I have a bad seizure, so. Roll your sure. sleeves up for me. That's Let me not see. unusual. Let me see. Hold your arm out. <gasps> this one is bruised right there. Let's see the, let's see the other side there. No. <laughs> People that experience seizures are often injured. It is important to remember that even though Jamie was severely wounded and could have put up some sort of a struggle, Melgar's hands were free from any type of defensive wounds which would have been difficult to accomplish. Um, you got a lot of bruises on there. Yeah. You don't know how that happened. Well, these are from the, the tying, and then... So are your hands tied in front of you? No. So, um, so, I mean, you feel like you got hit in the head? I fell and hit my head, one or the other. Yeah. You do that often? Sometimes, yeah. And you don't recall hearing something before that happened? Nothing. No, you didn't hear nobody screaming and you could hear dogs barking outside, but you can't hear no, somebody screaming before. inside. No. You know how close that that room is to where you were I know. and you can't I hear somebody hear. screaming. I heard the dogs because they were probably right. I think they were outside, the, like where win, the window of the bathroom is. But I didn't hear anything after that. And the jacuzzi was still going. And actually, I don't even remember hearing the dogs. My husband's the one that says mm -hmm. he's got better hearing than I. But I heard the dogs whining afterwards. Yeah. I heard him whining too while I was in there, but I'm hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. I'm real hard of hearing, and I, I heard him whine. And, you know, the thing is, Sandra, you got to understand is that, you know, I've, I've been inside your house. I looked at the layout, I see the way it is, and I'm not sitting here to call you a liar. I'm not sitting here. I'm trying to just, you know, I'm trying to hear what you tell me and tell me, I, you know, I've asked you to be honest with me and, <laughs> and, you know, I don't know that you're not, but, uh, you know, I'm a reasonable man and, you know, I'm looking at what I saw there. Now, you know, they, they told you that there's a camera that was pointing towards your house, right? 
Yeah. You know that. Okay. When we talk about points of entry on your house, front door, then you got the garage door, and you got your back door. You uh, said they've got a doggy door for the dogs to go in and out of, right? Right. That doggy door is how big? It's not, it's about that big. For the little dogs to go in and out, okay. And you said that your husband shouldn't have had to go out the back door. Y'all keep that door locked? Usually, just, and sometimes. If yeah. somebody, you know, you heard dogs barking, and I heard your dogs barking a little bit. They barking while we came in there, and they 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 they, they chirp. You know, I got some dogs, and and I got some little dogs, and they chirp. You can hear them, and uh, but now, you know what I saw there. When I saw your husband's body, that's a pretty violent attack. Okay. In total, Jim Melgar had more than 50 stab, cutting, and blunt force wounds and injuries. He also had many defensive wounds on both hands, showing that he tried to fight off his attacker. This makes it difficult to believe it could have been Melgar, who would have been overpowered fairly easily by her husband. And the problem I'm having is, you know, I've gone through what you're telling me, and the way that I expect that this went down, Okay, and I've worked a lot of these, okay? And the problem I have is that, you know, if he encountered somebody when he went in there, when he was gone for 15 minutes, you got out five minutes later, so he had a good five minutes, that's a long time. And he went in there to deal with what he dealt with, and then you move into the closet to take care of your business there and get dressed and put lotion on, and if he encountered something that would do what we see there, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear something. And if that something is coming into the same room where you're at mm -hmm. to either knock you out or even encounter you, yeah. you're going to hear something. I don't care if you've got a tank cranked up in that bathroom with you. You're going to hear something when somebody encounters somebody that is stabbing somebody I wish I had, but I that didn't. violently that many times. You're going to hear that. I've seen people be stabbed in person, and you're going to hear it. You're going to live that the rest of your life. Okay? You're going to hear that. I didn't hear, I didn't hear anything. I wish I had heard something. I didn't. See that what we're seeing there, the physical evidence that's there, and what you're telling us is just not adding up, Sandra. I'm not, I'm not going to call you a liar, but I'm saying I mean, I know you had saying. to hear something. You're our only person that was in that house. Know. You know, we're know. here. We're going to try to get to the bottom of this, but you're the only one that was in that house. And you know, are you scared of something? No. Are you afraid of somebody coming back after yeah, you? Yeah, I'm afraid they'll come back, whoever, but no. And if you don't tell us something, are you afraid of that? Is that no. what you're afraid of? No. You know, we need to try to get somebody, if that's what happened, we need to try to get them off the street, right? Right. But no, I would tell you, I don't, I didn't hear anything. The only thing I can think of is... Are you covering something up, Sandra? No. Why would you take a polygraph? Because I'm so stressed right now i can't even think straight it's not a good reason well i just don't want it used against me that's all I'd, i'll take it but not just why would I mean, it be used against you because i'm stressed and, and i mean i just because I'm you're stressed a really beyond, beyond that has your husband ever hit you no no physical no never did your husband tell you something tonight that no. made you black out? No, it doesn't work that way. Has your, uh, would your husband have a girlfriend on the side and maybe a jealous boyfriend would come? No. Has your uh, husband ever told you he was going to leave you? Yeah. He's never we talked about plans. that. We were making plans. We were making plans. He was going to leave me. Do you think he's ever told one of his family members that he was going to leave you? Well, he has. I, I mean, have you known about, about that? No. 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 Yeah. 
We were fine. We were just fine. What happens when we uh, we find only your DNA at that scene and no stranger? I touched him. Besides of course, we're gonna find, we were in the tub together. What if we don't find any stranger's DNA no. there? Male and female DNA that investigators found around the house on dresser drawer pulls, door handles, and bathroom door handles did not match anyone in the Melgar family. I don't know. I mean, it's not my job. I don't know. So your your blood will never be a mixture into his blood. I'm sorry. The blood on him. There'll be never no mixture of your blood and his blood. If I'm bleeding right here in my hand and he's bleeding and I rub his hand, there shouldn't be none of my blood into his blood. I'm not bleeding anymore. Well, that's what I'm asking. There should not be anything, right? But mine. Right. No. No blood mixture, but... You understand that science has come a long way when I you talk about DNA. I me touching... Me having blood on me is from me touching... There's a difference between you checking for a pulse and then the kind of DNA we're talking about. You know, you got some hellacious injuries on your arms. But these are not, they, I'm not bleeding from them. These are burns. You understand that, uh, you know, we, we look at those injuries and we can tell what that's all about. And what is that one all about? Those are some wraparound bruising. Wraparound bruising. Yes, ma'am. And I won't go into the reasons why that that's caused like that. I won't do that now. But I, I'm just telling no you, you need to is, yeah. kind of be honest with us. I get bruised all the time when I fall and when I, you know. How often do you fall? I've fallen many times. I've broken my shoulder from falling. I've. But you're walking with that cane. Yeah, but it's when on days that I don't walk, I don't walk with the cane. Uh, do you have a hard time I... walking when you don't walk with that cane? Depends on the day. Some days are good. Okay, on a good day. No, on a good day, I'm okay. If it's warm You're fine? outside. No problems? No. I mean, I walk kind of slow. I don't I don't run or jog or anything. But I mean, can somebody tell that you've had hip, re hip replacements when on a good day? And that you got pain? No, probably not. They, they can't tell? No. Could you have hurt your husband and not remember it? No. Have you ever done anything like that? No. Hurt anybody and not remember it? No. no. That's not a possibility. You're saying absolutely not. I mean, there may be something wrong with you. No. Your illness that uh, could make you snap, huh? No. It doesn't work that way. I mean, after 32 years, we... Did he grab you last night? No. Did he squeeze your arms? No. Did he grab your arms? No. No. We weren't angry. We weren't. Uh, we weren't arguing. We were fine. No, he didn't. Not at all, Sandra. Actually, there was one little. When I got out of the tub, I almost slipped and he grabbed me. For someone with a condition that causes poor balance and easy bruising, this is a reasonable excuse. Since Melgar did not give this explanation immediately, the detective believes she is grasping at straws. But that was this arm. Where? Show me. Mm, probably, probably around here. Okay. He grabbed my arm. Uh, he grabbed me. So he was in there when you got out. He was, he was inside when I, when I was getting out, and then. In, uh, I thought you said he got out before you did. No, that was when I went to the bathroom. I got out to go to the bathroom. Okay, so he, he grabbed me. Show me where he grabbed you at again. He just, like, I slipped and he raised his heart, his arm. Raise, raise your sleeve there. Show him what you showed me. That one right there, I think. That was it. He raised, he raised his arm to try to catch me, and I just grabbed onto him, and I got out. That was it. I think that was it. Maybe that was it, but it, it, I think that was it. I remember it was this arm. 
Showing this arm. Showing the bruising there. I don't think that's what wrap around is, but I think that's from me falling and hitting. Can you show him up here? Yeah. He didn't grab me there. I got a bruise over here. Yeah. So where are those bruises from? I don't know. Those I don't know. I don't recall those. I didn't have those before. What about the other? Can you raise the other one up that high? Okay. A little bit higher there. And on the outside of the arm. Okay. I'm always bruised and I'm always... Why? Just from my illness, from all the medicines I take, from... What do you think should happen to the person that if we catch that did this to your husband, what, what do you think his punishment or her punishment should be? Do you think they should get a second chance? No. What no. do you think should happen to him or her? They should go to prison. Isn't that what they normally do? They go to prison. <laughs> Burglary and, and then homicide be construed as a capital murder it could be death penalty. Think they should get the death penalty? Yeah. Yeah. I have no problem with the death penalty. I think it certainly serves a purpose. Was your husband abusive towards you? No. No. We got along fine. Ask all my friends. We got along great. Did you stage that at your house, no? Stage it? Yeah. Did you did you plan this? No. No, I did not. Would you tell me if you did? I wouldn't even know where to start to stage it. And how am I going to tie myself up like that and not even be able to get out of it? I mean, I, I really was trying to get out of it. The prosecution would later show that it would technically be possible for a person to tie themselves up in the way Melgar was found. It is still debatable if Melgar, with her mobility limitations, would have been able to do so. Were you tied up when you first woke up? I couldn't tell you that. I don't remember. That's one thing I don't remember. I've been trying to remember that. How did you find out that you were tied up when you woke up the second time? Because I could, I could tell. I was more, more awake that time. More con conscious or conscious at that time. And you never heard anything. No. no. You didn't hear your husband yelling at all? No. I mean, he, that's pretty, you know, the wound that he had is pretty, it's a painful. He went through a lot of pain, he suffered a lot. And he was right there. That's less than 20, 25 feet from where you were at. The only thing I can think of is that I was already out when that happened. That's the only thing I can think of. Well, isn't it ironic that you could you, you black out at the exact time when he's getting stabbed and bludgeoned? I don't have an answer for you. Multiple times like that. Dying, screaming oh for help. Oh my gosh. Just. I don't you know what? I don't understand that. that that's ironic. I mean, it's a lot of blood that he lost. And then whatever he encountered, he encountered them before you did. Before they came and knocked you out. That's why I think there was ample opportunity for you to hear something and nothing. And you're saying nothing. I mean, I don't. You could have had an army tank running in that bathroom and you'd hear that. That's what I don't understand. Could you hear him? No, I couldn't hear him. 
Could you hear him yelling for help? No. Could you hear him screaming? I didn't hear him. I mean, he was in pain. We know that. He suffered a lot. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I need you to help me on this. Can you help me? I need you to help me. Sandra, can you help me? I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. I need help, Sandra. Please help me. Screaming after screaming after screaming, he's in pain. I need help. The detective presses hard, trying to drive Melgar to confess from the weight of the guilt. Melgar is distressed, but does not change her statement. Help me, Sandra. Help me. Tell me, your husband's a nice guy. He went through a lot of pain. Help me. Sandra, I need help. Please help me, Sandra. Sandra, help me. Sandra, I need help. I didn't I hear help. anything. Stop already. I need help, Sandra. I need help. Help me. That's it. That's it. I, I, I need a lawyer. I, I'm not talking anymore because you guys are just trying to torture me here. I'm not torturing you. I'm asking for help. Do you love your husband? Yes, I love my husband. Do you care about him? Yes. Do you want us to finally kill him? Of course. I don't think you did. Did you kill your husband? No, I didn't. Did you have anything to do with your husband's death? No. The police were never able to come up with a clear reason for Melgar to have murdered her husband. All of the evidence against her was circumstantial at best. The jury deliberated over the case for about eight hours over two days, and at first was split down the middle about their decision. On the second day, Sandy Melgar was found guilty of murder. She was given 27 years in state prison. She is appealing her conviction. And that's where we end this video. If you like today's video, then drop a line. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can check out my Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.